Hello and welcome to Electromagnetics 1. Uh, this is lecture number 6. Uh, we're going to be talking again about electrostatics and the second big topic in electrostatics is Gauss's law. Well, what exactly is Gauss's law? Gauss's law states that the total electric flux psi through any closed surface is equal to the total charge enclosed by that surface. Gauss's law is one of Maxwell's equations and it's useful for solving electrostatic problems that have a high degree of symmetry. Let's see how that works. Let's start here with the differential form of Gauss's law right here that we've seen before. This is one of Maxwell's equations. Um, you can see what, what it's saying is that the divergence of this quantity here, the permittivity epsilon times the electric field, is equal to uh, the charge density, the volume charge density, that exists at that point in a region of space. Well, um, this quantity in here, epsilon, or, or the permittivity times the electric field, is also um, defined to be the electric flux density. D, capital D. Uh, so what I would like to do is start with this differential form here of Gauss's law and I'm just simply going to integrate both sides of this equation over some volume of space. Okay, So we, we have a, a, a volume of space V bounded by a surface S and it's a closed, a closed surface. So I'm integrating over the volume here on the left hand side and over the volume on the right hand side. I can apply the divergence theorem to the left hand side here, uh, the divergence of some vector um, integrated over a volume is equal to that same vector dotted with a little differential surface area normal to the surface at that point and integrated over the entire surface. Okay, That's simply um, this this is simply a, a consequence of the divergence theorem applied to the left hand side of this equation. On the right hand side here, when we integrate a volume charge density over a volume, by definition we get whatever charge, um, total charge was in, is enclosed by that surface or whatever total charge is in that volume just by definition. Um, the volume charge density has units coulombs coulombs per meter cubed, so when we integrate over a three-dimensional volume, we just simply get um, the units are simply coulombs, or which is just charge. So this is the um, integral form of Gauss's law right here. Um, the uh, electric flux density d dotted with ds integrated over the entire surface bounding the volume is equal to whatever total charge is enclosed by that surface. Let's see how we can take advantage of this to uh, solve some problems uh, with a high degree of symmetry. Here's the example that I'd like us to consider for the balance of the hour. Um, it's an infinite charged cylinder. And so here, here's how we're going to set up the problem. The, 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 charge, uh, the cylinder has a charge density, rho sub v, that's equal to rho nanocoulombs per meter cubed so long as um, you're inside the cylinder essentially. So in other words the um, volume charge density varies as a function of rho. It increases linearly with rho inside this region. As long as uh, rho is less than a, as long, in other words as long as we're inside the cylinder um, the volume charge density increases linearly and then it's zero outside the cylinder. So there's no charge outside, outside our cylinder. So the coordinate system that we need here clearly is, is cylindrical coordinates. So just imagine we're looking um, at a cross section of the cylinder and the z-axis is, is coming out of, um, out of the screen. And so the, uh, the axis of the cylinder is aligned with, with the z-axis essentially and the cylinder has some radius A. Our task is to determine the electric field E both inside the cylinder and, and outside the cylinder. We'd like to have an expression for the electric field when we're inside and an expression for the electric field 
when we're outside. How are we going to do this? Well, somehow we're going to use the integral form of Gauss's law here to actually solve for uh, the electric field that appears inside this integration. All right. How, how does that work? How can we do that? Well, the first thing that, that we, can, we, we notice here is that by symmetry arguments, the electric field only has a component along the row direction. Now, why, why would that be? Well, if you think about it, let's say we're observing the field here, out here at this point right here. Um, all of the charges inside the cylinder are, are positively charged. And so, um, if you remember from uh, from Coulomb's law, both the the point form and the and the differential form or the integral form we saw last time for Coulomb's law, um, a a little differential uh, charge here is going to um, contribute to the electric field uh, pointing on, uh, along the line that connects this point and this point right here. If we come over here to the opposite side, this little differential piece of charge will contribute to a little differential um, electric field that points along this line connecting them. And you can imagine that as you integrate, as you integrate over this entire volume, the only component of the field that's going to survive is going to be along the row direction. There won't be any electric field pointing along the z direction because we have as much charge. Uh, it's the cylinder is infinitely long, and so we have as much charge above any point as below. So there won't be any electric field in the z direction, and there won't be any electric field in the phi direction. Only in the row direction. That's the kind of symmetry that you can take advantage of with with Gauss's law. Let's see how we're going to do that specifically here. Um, just in, in preparation, we're going to be doing, clearly we're going to be doing some um, a surface integral here. And uh, also, in order to get this term, we need to do a volume integral. So the relative differential surface, the, I should say the relevant differential surface um, area in cylindrical coordinates is this one right here. It's the one that's normal to the surface of the cylinder. Okay, it points in the rho hat direction, and its magnitude is rho d phi d z. Okay, it's a little differential surface area. Again, it's like you're integrating over the surface of a pop can. And then um, d d v differential volume here in cylindr in cylindrical coordinates is given by rho d rho d phi d z. These are just two terms that um, you can look up essentially depending on the coordinate system that you happen to be in. Okay, well, let's see. How do we actually uh, use this thing to solve for the electric field? Well, here's how you do it. Let's say that um, we're inside the cylinder. In other words, rho is less than or equal to A here. What we're going to do is we're going to create something called a Gaussian surface right here. And uh, for this particular geometry, the Gaussian surface that we want uh, is just a little pillbox, basically. It's just a little tiny cylinder of finite height L, okay, and radius rho. So here we're looking, uh, this is a top view of our uh, Gaussian surface. So uh, again, it's, it's just a ring. The cross section of it is just a ring. And if we turn it on its side, then um, you just are looking at the side of, of the cylinder. So uh, this Gaussian surface has a top, a bottom, and it has, ha has sides. It's just a pop can, basically. It's, it's just a pop can, right? It's important to note, though, that initially um, the height of our pop can, the length L, is finite. This is, this is a finite length L. So we're not going to be um, enclosing all of the charge initially here in the z direction. But that will be okay, and we'll we'll see why that is um, in a moment here. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set up um, the this particular integral right here. We're going to set this integral up again. And when uh, when we're inside when we're inside of our um, 
uh, when we're inside our cylinder, we want to integrate over the surface of this, this Gaussian surface, okay, over the surface of this pop can. So we need to integrate over the top, the bottom, and the sides, okay. Let's consider the integration of um, a d dot ds over the top surface here, okay. Over the top surface, um, the differential surface area points in the z direction. It, it, it only points in the z direction. But we decided by symmetry that our electric field has to only point in the rho direction. So z dot rho is equal to zero everywhere along the top and the bottom surface actually. So there's no contribution to the flux from the top or the bottom of this um, pop can. The only contribution to the flux is going to be um, from the sides here, right here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to integrate over the sides of this pop can, okay, from z going from negative L over 2, all right, that point, up to L over 2, this point, and we're going to allow phi to go from 0 to 2 pi all the way around. That'll get us um, integrate that will help us to integrate over this the sides here of the pop can all right when you set that up that's what it looks like when you when you take the row component of D which is this dotted with DS here this is what you get on the left hand side now on the right hand side Gauss's law says okay um, the, the total electric flux is equal to flux through the surface here of our Gaussian surface has to be equal to whatever charge is enclosed in our inside of our Gaussian surface here okay so on the right hand side we have a volume integral we're, we're going to be integrating the if you notice we're going to, going to be integrating the volume charge density over the volume of our Gaussian surface, or I should say over the volume enclosed by our Gauss Gaussian surface, okay? All right, well, if you remember, again, the charge density is equal to rho nanocoulombs per meter cubed, all right? So we're going to have one factor of rho that comes in here. One, one thing that's important to understand is that I need a dummy variable um, for the integration over rho because rho actually is is one of is one of the limits of my integration. I'm going to integrate this volume from z, rho equals zero, or I should say, from here to rho. Okay, um, so we need to introduce a dummy variable for the rho integration, and I'm going to call that dummy variable s. Okay, so we're actually going to be integrating this s variable from zero up to rho, from here to here middle to there. Um, so we have rho times dv and in cylindrical coordinates again here's our dv. Um, rho will be replaced by s again for the purposes of this uh, integration but just you can think of these this integral right here I should say the integral over this variable as um, an integral essentially over the rho direction. Okay, So when you multiply rho times rho, you get um, rho squared or s squared here, ds, d phi, dz. You have to integrate from z going again from minus L over 2 to L over 2, and phi going from 0 to pi, rho going from, or in this case, s going from 0 to rho. Okay. When you carry out all of these integrals, if you'll notice, this integrand is, is constant with respect to um, phi and z. Um, so the uh, integration over z just simply gives you a factor of L. Integration over phi um, gives you a factor of 2 pi. The exact same argument holds on the left hand side here. Um, this doesn't, this integrand does not depend on um, phi or z. So you get a contribution of L and 2 pi on the left hand side as well. On the right hand side again, um, when we integrate s squared ds, we get s to the third over three evaluated from zero to rho. That just gets me this contribution rho to the third over three right here. That's where that comes from, right here, rho to the third over three, okay? On the left hand side again, um, we've decided this component, our, the rho component of E only depends on rho, so it's a constant with respect to phi and z, so that comes out of the integration as well. 
So what we get is this expression on the left hand side is equal to this exp expression on the right hand side. And when I solve this left hand side for the row component of the electric field, this is what I come up with. It's equal to rho, rho squared divided by 3 epsilon naught. So this is an expression for the rho component of the electric field when we're inside of our cylinder. Okay. Let's see, uh, let's see how we solve this problem when uh, we're outside of our cylinder. Okay. Now we've got the exact same uh, Gaussian surface that we had before except we're saying that um, rho is greater than our radius a now. Okay. When we set up our integrations they're almost identical um, to the ones that we did for um, rho less than, e less than or equal to a. Um, if you'll notice on the left hand side the integral is actually completely identical. Okay. And on the right hand side the only modification is instead of integrating our charge density from zero to rho um, we're just integrating it from zero up to a. That's the only change. That's the only change. But it makes a huge difference in the final form of the field, as you'll see. Again, when we carry out all of these integrations, we get the, the factor of 2 pi l on both sides, just like before. But now on the right hand side, we get a factor of a to the third over 3. Okay, instead of rho to the third over 3, we have a to the third over 3. And the left hand side is the same. So now, when we solve this equation for the rho component right here, we get um, e sub rho e is equal to a to the third divided by 3 uh, rho epsilon naught. Okay? So outside of the cylinder, the electric field falls off like 1 over rho. Inside the cylinder, it increases like rho squared. You can actually um, make a simple plot of this particular electric field and I've done that here using MATLAB okay and so on the x-axis this is just um, the row the row variable normalized by the radius okay so this point right here is rho is equal to a and you can see that from 0 up to a um, the row component increases like rho squared it's quadratic here and then once we get outside of the cylinder that's it corresponds to rho greater than a, the magnitude of the electric field just falls off like 1 over rho, just like that. Okay. So uh, that's an example of how you use uh, Gauss's law to solve uh, for the electric field for a geometry, a charge distribution with a high degree of symmetry. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.